Kevin, firstly, can I just well, f- firstly, can I just start and ask how the how the manager is? How's, how's Neil getting on? He's getting on well, to be fair. Um, he's going to come in this morning. Uh, he'll be in on the team meeting and certainly speaking to players. So uh, he's well on, on well on the road to recovery, as we say. Yeah, I mean that's obviously very good to hear. Um, how has he been throughout it all? Is it is he kept is he kept fairly upbeat? I know he's obviously an upbeat character anyway. Yeah, he, he has. Um, we speak every day, and um, you know we can hear the improvement in him day by day. So yeah, it, but uh, once again, you know the club's very well run club, as I said before, and uh, he's been able to take this opportunity to rest and recuperate. In terms of of, of him physically, um, how how was he? Was he was he concerned a little bit due to obviously his age and the fact that this could have an effect on him? To be fair to Neil, he looks after himself and he does quite a bit of work here, um, gym-wise. And he's, he's been in good nick and I think really that's been uh, a saving for him. He hasn't really suffered heavily from, from the COVID, but clearly it's a worry for everybody when you get a strain that everybody seems to be saying is a serious uh, virus. So, uh, But gladly, and uh, he's in today, like I say, and uh, he'll be moving on forward from there. And with the rest of the squad and, and, and the backroom team as well, have you managed to keep it contained just... With Neil, have you, I assume you've been getting tested this week to ensure the rest of you are okay. Yeah, we're, yeah, everybody's okay. Um, as I said, you know, we do follow the strict protocols here. You can't walk through more than ten foot without having uh, spraying all over you. Um, but it's something we know we've got to do, and, and it, you know, we've all got responsibilities as a society to each other, not just to the players here, but to our, our family at home, our friends. So you know, we, we stick very much to to the uh, the COVID rules. Have you missed them? If I'm being honest, yes, of course we have. Um, look, he's, he's uh, as you say, he's a bubbly character. Uh, he keeps you on your toes. And, um, you know, when you've got one of your own who's not well, you know, he's part of our team. And, and, and we, we want everybody as fit and as well as we can. And, and um, as I say, gladly, he'll be back today and, and we'll move forward from there. And I suppose it shows you just anyone can be affected by this. Yes. Obviously, we've, throughout the, the leagues, we've seen a number of players uh, contracted, test positive, but I think it hit a lot of people hard when it was Neil that got it, the manager of the, the football club. So it just shows you that anyone can get this and anyone's in danger. Well, not that you want to be used as an example for anything, really, but this is an example that it can strike anywhere, anytime, any place. And we've seen that certainly down at West Ham and, and, and Leighton Orient. Um, look, there's a definite upturn in uh, in this virus. And uh, my daughter is an A&E, senior A&E nurse, and she's dealing with COVID and she tells me it's a definite upturn. So we've just got to be aware, everybody, and stick to the rules and social distancing, sticking to, you know, washing hands and space. And if we all do that, we're helping each other. But uh, sometimes, you know, um, uh, a larger than life person like Neil Warnock gets it, then you understand that anybody can get it. Yeah, and that must be for you, Kevin. That must be reassuring that your daughter's got that sort of knowledge. Have you have you had to lean on any of that to, to advise Neil with his recovery? No, gladly I haven't because, as I said, Neil's actually coped with it very well um, and, and it, it's not hit him like it has hit certain p- other people. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we know underlying uh, illnesses can be a, 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 a hard harder hit from the COVID. So uh, I think Neil, as I say, looks after himself well and, and, and the protocols that we've followed and the club doctors, that he's, the rules that he's set him, Neil's followed. And, and as I say, he's into, in this morning. So... Effectively, he's had his ten days. He's, he's followed the protocols, and, and he's back to work. And is he is he planning to travel then to London? We're not looking for him to travel. We think uh, I think Neil sort of said that. Look, yourself and Ronnie have have done all the preparation work all week. So I think, uh, and also the club, we feel that uh, it, it's a final rest for him the weekend because after the weekend, uh, it's a long, long season. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that, and, and and obviously you said a moment ago that that, that you have missed him, but. Just on a lighter side of things, do you know how he's been keeping himself busy for the last 10 days or so? Well, believe it or not, uh, on a, a fitness bike. Um, <laughs> so he, he's been doing his exercises, but uh, he's been stuck in the house. Um, I think that's his biggest frustration. Uh, he walked down the length of the garden a couple of times the other day. So a circuit of the garden as much as he can do. So that's why he had, this, he had a, a, a cycle brought in and um, he's looking after himself, as I say, the best he can. Um, that, that's really good to hear. Um, just on, on the match itself, um, Kevin. I mean, I guess yeah. it was a it was a fairly positive result 
um, last week. It's been a, a really, really difficult start to the season with the two matches that you've had. Do you feel that the result last week gives you something to build on? Can you go down to QPR and, and, and get something and add on and kind of get the momentum building? Well, I think I think both games we could have had something from, and you're quite right. It was a tough, particularly tough start when you look at the squads that they could do. I think it was 50 million on the bench uh, on Bournemouth on, on, on Saturday. And um, we've we've shaded possession, uh, shots, everything else in the games, both of them. So from that point of view, we've got to build on those performances. And a precursor to getting good results is performances. If you haven't got a performance and you can't get a performance, then you're just gambling on getting a result every now and again. So at this moment in time, the lads have throughout the pre-season have, have been looking positive and, and been getting some good results. So... We want to make sure we go down to you know what is a very you know well well organised uh, QPR side. There was a bit of flair in the lads of Chair and Samuelson, um, a good a good blend up top with Dicky who gives them that little bit of physical presence and aerial if they want to go that way. And um, you know Mark Warburton has done a good job down there, and, and we know it's going to be a, tif, uh, a tough side. Bearing in mind that they came up to the Riverside and played particularly well, um, so we're well aware uh, of the capabilities of Queens Park Rangers. Thanks, Kevin. I'm just going to pass you over now. Thanks for the update. Thank you. Kevin, hi. It's uh, Mark from the BBC. Um, just in terms of, of uh, Neil and with the, with the COVID-19, obviously you never want anybody in the, in, in the setup to, to get it, but is it a timely reminder to, to, to young players, to all players really, that you've just got to really follow the protocols? Young players, old players, um, everybody. Uh, never mind players, society follow the protocols it's absolutely vital that we all follow the protocols we do not want to be taking covid home to any of our friends families um so you know stick to the covid rules and that's really um as i say it's not an example you want to be but neil is an example that it can be caught by anybody and 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 um where he's caught it from we do not know because it, it it's not as if he's been out and about he hasn't been so um stick to the rules and even though he won't be with you in London, obviously he was, uh, I think, sort of giving some useful uh, useful thoughts from Cornwall the other weekend. Well, actually, he's up in Middlesbrough. Uh, he's not down in Cornwall. I don't know where that's come from um, because he couldn't travel anywhere because he had COVID. So he's been in the house, um, um, ironically, only a couple of hundred metres from the training ground, um, uh, but can't get involved, as we know. So we'll just see what happens. Um, He's quite happy to know that myself and Ronnie are in charge. Um, we've done it so many times before, so it is a chance that he can actually rest and recuperate and come back strong. And uh, Chuba at home, how's he settled into the into the setup? Well, I have to say, there's a great feeling amongst the players and there's a good camaraderie and, and the dressing room's good and, and Akpon's slipped in very, very well. He's an absolute smashing lad um, from a good background and it, it, he's uh, he was desperate to get here for w- weeks ago, but obviously the run in the European Cup uh, um, or Champions League uh, meant that he couldn't come but we're delighted to have him here and uh, looking forward to integrating him in the team and Grant Hall's QPR it hasn't taken long for, the, for them to come up as an opponent this season unfortunately when you leave a club like that that does often happen and you go back to your old club so he, he's quickly going back to his own his old club so we listen we want to put a good performance on uh, not just for ourselves and our fans but obviously Grant would like to go back there and do well as well but he's well aware of the capabilities of uh, Queen's Park Rangers and uh, it's been handy to have him here to talk about what we can maybe expect one of the features of Neil coming to the club at the back end of last season was the, the, the results away from home, which was went to a, a long way to actually keeping you in the division. Yes, ironically, it was our away form that kept us up, not our home form. So, um, But look, we, we, we feel now that we've turned something of a corner. Um, we're starting to get results at home. We beat uh, Shrewsbury, Drew at home to Bournemouth. So we're starting to get results at home, which is good. But we want to maintain that away performance as well. And as I say, the performances of the lads have, have been very, very good uh, over the last four or five weeks. And we just want to maintain that performance level. And I know if we do that, we'll get results. Thanks, Kevin. Good luck. Pleasure. Hi, Kevin. Hi. It's Chris from Fintys. Yeah. Um, last weekend, obviously, you, you had the fans back in, a thousand of them. Um, and I think you said after the match what a difference that had made. So it must have been a bit of blue to see this week that that trial is now paused again I have to say we're, we're bitterly disappointed that it's there uh, been denied um, it was a f- tremendous success very well run um, all the feedback from the fans and everything else was, was absolutely positive mm-hmm. and we're disappointed that, that the government have just jumped on it too quickly for me I thought it was um, a very well run experiment and we're hoping that they will look at it and, and review the situation because it was a definite improvement 
uh, around the atmosphere of the game. I think that it added to the quality of the game, the intensity of the players, uh, and nothing more that, you know, how can business run with no income? Um, it just beggars belief that I know, as I say, my daughter's in it, in the middle of COVID, and I know we can't be sort of over expansive, but well organised, well structured, well run, surely that's got to be the answer. Absolutely, because as you say, it, it has a direct impact on the business side of the football club and without the business side, the club just doesn't run. Well, I fear. I fear for clubs who are on their knees anyway and clubs that need that, you know, take in 50 to 60% of the revenue through gates. Um, we, we talk about the National League. I mean, they're now not going to kick off. Listen, we, it's going to disrupt the FA Cup, everything else. I know people will say, look, it's only sport and we're dealing with a major virus. But I just think that surely in the last six months, we uh, as a society have learned a lot about COVID and how to deal with COVID. And we do know that uh, following good protocols um, drastically reduce the chance of catching COVID. And I thought when you saw that last week, the, the organisation at the borough last week was absolutely phenomenal. And um, uh, as I say, you couldn't walk more than 10 metres without having a spray somewhere. So look, so long as it was done well, organised well and run well, and, I, and it definitely does, certainly was at Middlesbrough, can't speak for other clubs, um, then I, I really hope that there's a review and quickly and that we can get fans back into the into the clubs because as you quite rightly say you know it's not just about atmosphere and creating something more of a, an, an edge to a game it's about finances and any business that can't sell their product is doomed to failure and, and we cannot I cannot contemplate losing football to the detriment that we could do if we're not careful It's interesting that you, you talk about the finances I mean there's a lot being made of the fact that you know, the AFL are kind of looking up at the Premier League and sort of wondering whether some of the riches up there should be cascaded down. I mean, what do you what do you think of that? I know some people are, are dead against it. Like Sean Dyche has said, well, why why should we? You know, we run a business. Our business is successful. Why should we help other businesses? Yeah, I mean, I think Sean would be the first one to admit away from that, that, you know, Sean came from lower level as well. So it's, he knows important how it, for, for Sean to get the opportunity at Burnley in the Premier League, you know, they've got to be a lower league. Uh, sort of system and we talk about a pyramid I, I'd like to think that they would that, that the teams that, you know have been up in the Premier League um, will understand that when you're down there things that things do change drastically financially wise but many a player in the Premier League now um, uh, if you look at the Chelsea players with Mason Mount and, and quite a few of them, all went on loan to, to championship clubs to to give them that uh, the extra knowledge uh, the physicality development the, the psychological development so there is a big role to play from the Football League into the into the wares of the Premier League. Um, I, I just hope that, that, that everybody sees a little bit of sense and that, that there is some help somewhere. Because once again, it's not the fault of football clubs that you can't bring fans in. It's, it's no one's fault. And therefore, if a club was being badly run and it, it exposed itself to massive debts, uh, it had been frivolous with its signings, then it deserves to go out of business because it's not been run properly. But this is not the case with many, many of the football league clubs. This is a COVID-19 that no one expected to come along and, and create the devastation that it has. And just last one for me. Um, it's important to remember as well that, you know, ultimately when football clubs fall on hard times, it's not the footballers that suffer. It's not the management team. It's the people like, you know, the, the kids staff, you know, the, the, the people who work in the canteen. It's those sort of staff, you know, you're, you're sort of run-of-the-mill people that ultimately pay the price. Yes, I mean, I, I experienced this at Leeds United when we came out of the Premier League and 127 people lost their jobs. They've been at the club 20, 30 years. And, uh, but I also read an article this week, which I think was very, which, which is very true. You know, many a football club um, helps the psychological um, development and uh, people. A football club gives them something to live for. It gives them something to get up in the morning for. Uh, the support, sometimes... Loneliness is taken away because they support players. They know more about footballers than they do some of their own family. So the psychological damage that uh, losing football clubs in the society. Uh, a great article on Accrington Stanley. You know they do so many things in the football community that if they went away, there was it's, it devastates. Old people who get food delivered from the club have nothing to do with football, but they rely on on a club to do that. And that's what the capability of a club is. The club is the hub of the society. It's, it's many where when a town is doing badly, they look at their football club to pick them up. And uh, it's massive. It's massive. So please, God, you know, uh, we can come to some sort of solution and, and, and get, get everything done properly. 
it does seem farcical. I think the Colchester United chairman had, had commented that you know you can sit in an aeroplane with three hundred people crammed in, but you can't s- spread fans out around a football stadium in fresh air. This is why I just don't understand some of the logic on it. You know, you can go into a pub uh, till ten o'clock at night and um, and have people within two metres of you, but you can have it at a football club such as Middlesbrough, for example. We could have ten thousand fans in, and they could be more than three metres apart and still be okay. So, where's the logic in it all?